The daily life we perceive with our five senses is not reality. Quantum physics has shown that space and time are illusions of perception. Therefore, our bodies cannot truly be a reality if they occupy this space. Ernest Rutherford performed an experiment in Manchester that revealed to him the shape of the interior of an atom. Scientists were shocked to discover that the atom is almost entirely empty space. The question then became, how could this empty atom possibly make the solid world around us? Our true consciousness does not exist in our brains or in our bodies. But this illusion of our individual bodies, along with the misinformation of our true origins, has manifested the idea that we all think independently from one another. With this misunderstanding, it would seem impossible to scientifically explain telepathy, clairvoyance, spiritual mediums, and other phenomena dealing with transferring information between sources without physical means of communication. But when you understand that there is a common spiritual bond between all things in the universe, and that we are all part of one divine intelligence, no phenomena is unexplainable. This simple understanding fills all the holes in modern religions. It explains reincarnation, deja vu, predictions of the future, and literally every event, occurrence, or anomaly ever experienced. The blank matter within the most basic building blocks of perceivable existence is malleable and molded by intent. This means that consciousness shapes our reality. This seems difficult to accept for most, and it is quite understandable. In modern times, we are taught from an early age how to think rationally and tangibly. This is a very left-brain method of education, and it has more harmful effects than it's given credit for. The left brain deals with logic, details, facts, patterns, practicality, science, and math. As the right brain deals with feeling, intuition, symbols, images, risk-taking, philosophy, and religion. With a deliberate push for government-controlled educational curriculums, generation after generation of the youth are being taught to focus only on the facts, figures, and numbers. Repetition is used to train children subconsciously to accept what they're learning. Children aren't rewarded for questioning the validity of the information they receive. They are ridiculed. However, the children who blindly accept the information as true and merely regurgitate the information on command when it is time to take a test, those children go on to become the decision makers in our government, law, medicine, business, and every other occupation with power and prestige. The most detrimental effect of being pushed away from holistic thinking with the full brain into a strictly left brain thought is what is known as the suppression of the feminine. Every male and female have both feminine and masculine qualities. It has nothing to do with man or woman. These are represented by the left and right brain, yin and yang, black and white, light and dark, and most every other duality. Both are vital to our spiritual and physical health. In ancient Egypt, the female was the rightful heir to the throne. The male she chose to marry became Pharaoh. This depicted the goddess tradition that has been destroyed to make way for a patriarchal, male-dominated society we see enforced in every major denomination. In suppressing the feminine of every society and pushing the people to strictly left-brain thinking, the natural ability for humanity to feel earthly, cosmic, and personal energy became lost. Traditions that were passed on through shamans, witch doctors, magicians, psychics, and seers of all kind became outlawed and ridiculed and given a stigma of something out of a Hollywood movie. Every religion explains that we are children of God and have godliness inside of us. If you erase the anthropomorphized God and understand that God is nothing more than the spiritual web that connects all things, all religious scriptures begin to make much more sense. Our bodies are merely vessels to contain our spirit, to gather experience for the divine mind. This is how evolution is possible. It is scientifically proven that all species are evolving into more complex beings. Innate knowledge or racial memory within all species is the understanding of newborns of all kinds to automatically know specific details and traits that the mother does not have to teach them. Therefore, innate knowledge helps every species naturally evolve towards more complex organisms. Lyle Watson claims that it was a Japanese scientist who observed the hundredth monkey effect in 1952. In this observation, he discovered that a certain portion or percentage of monkeys learned or developed a new trait. The knowledge became an innate ability in that species. This is further testimony to a collective consciousness among species.